Today, Paul hits the Corinthian church up for money on Branch Together. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together. My name is Jared, and today we're reading 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Before we dive in, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, help us have still uh, ready hearts today for whatever it is you have for us in this chapter. Um, We thank you for your servant, Paul. We thank you for the church in Corinth, that they can be a guide and a witness to us as we see this faith played out in real life. Um, I'm amazed. I'm thankful. I'm inspired by uh, how these stories, these letters can still speak to us today. And the issues that those churches faced are the same issues that churches face The issues that those humans wrestled with are the same issues we wrestle with today. Um, There's something so powerfully uh, just universal (laughs) for people of all different tribes, tongues, nations, that that, uh, the good news uh, can be communicated to people of all different places and uh, through time that a letter like this 2,000 years has something to say to us today in this place and this time. Lord, I pray for all those who are listening today, wherever they are from, whatever, however far away they are, whatever language uh, they speak, that you would speak to us uh, in a, your unique and powerful way today. In your name we pray. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that was given to the church of Macedonia. During a severe trial brought about by affliction, Their abundant joy and their extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. I can testify that, according to their ability, and even beyond their ability, of their own accord, they begged us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints, and not just as we had hoped. Instead, they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then to us by God's will. So we urged Titus that just as he had begun, so he should also complete among you this act of grace. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, speech, knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love for us, excel also in this act of grace. I am not saying this as a command. Rather, by means of the diligence of others, I am testing the genuineness of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving advice because it is profitable for you, who began last year not only to do something, but also to want to do it. Now also finish the task to that just as there was an eager desire. There may also be a completion, according to what you have. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. It is not that there should be relief for others and hardship for you, but it is a question of equality. At the present time, your surplus is available for their need, so that their abundance may in turn meet your need, in order that there may be equality. As it is written, the person who had much did not have too much, and the person who had little did not have too little. Thanks be to God who put the same concern for you into the heart of Titus. For he welcomed our appeal, and being very diligent, went out to you by his own choice. We have sent with him the brother who was praised among all the churches for his gospel ministry. And not only that, but he was also appointed by the churches to accompany us with this gracious gift that we are administering for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. We are taking this precaution so that no one will criticize us about the large sum that we are administering. Indeed, we are giving careful thought to do what is right, not only before the Lord, but also before people. We have also sent with them our brother. We have often tested him in many circumstances and found him to be diligent. And now even more diligent because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and co-worker for you, as for our brothers. They are the messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. Therefore, show them proof before the churches of your love and are boasting about you. In chapter 8, Paul calls on the Corinthian church to be generous and give to the mission of the church. 
Uh, one of the accusations and uh, sometimes accurate accusations is that the church is greedy or always asking for money. That's you know, some a, a common critique of church today or people that are upset with church or have stopped going to church is that oh, all they care about is money and things like that. Um, but let's look at how Paul talks about giving money for helping others. There's some really good stuff in here. So a little bit of background, little bit of background. Paul is trying to raise money for the hurting church in Jerusalem. He tells Corinth about the Macedonian church. Um, so he's talking to the church in Corinth. He's trying to raise money for the church in Jerusalem. And he's sharing an example of another church. This church in Macedonia ends up being this great example. This other church in Macedonia, it gave generously even beyond their means. Their giving hurt them a bit and it was more than expected. The Macedonian church was excited to give for the privilege, that's the way he put it, the privilege of sharing in the ministry of the saints. What an incredible way to think of giving. Think about that. Whatever meaningful thing you give to, think about it that way. Uh, You make some money for some work that you do, right? Uh, You now have money to invest in your life. Uh, You take care of yourself and your family, and then you have some more money to invest. What do you do with that money? The Macedonians invested that money in helping other churches going through difficult times. They invested that money in helping in the good news of Jesus and it going forward. They saw that as a privilege. They didn't see it as some other group or some other organization coming to ask me for money. They said, this is our life. This is our community. We are followers of Jesus. It is our privilege and honor to invest any money we have that we're able to spare in helping other people who are following Jesus and seeking to help others. Um, man, we, we don't think about that way. We don't think about money that way. Um, but think about it that way for a moment. God has given me work to do. Um, God has given you work to do. I have made some money. You have made some money. I have taken care of some essentials. You have taken some care of some essentials. And now we have the privilege of investing that money in good things. If you have some money, You can spend it on some things that don't matter, or you can figure out what matters and invest it in some things that you believe do matter. I'd encourage you to figure out what matters to you, figure out what is important to you, and invest your money towards those things. Now, chapter continues, and Paul's argument to the Corinthians is this, basically, hey, I'm not commanding you to give, but if you love Jesus and others, then you should give. His argument is, hey, this whole Jesus thing, Jesus was rich, the son of God, and he became poor and gave himself for you so that you might be rich. If he has made you rich, and and he's playing with this word rich and poor here, but that's what Paul fundamentally believes. We have been made rich. All followers of Jesus are now rich. Like we were poor in sin and brokenness. Jesus was rich next to God on the throne of heaven. And he came down, became poor for us so that we could all be made rich. He says, if that's actually what's happened, and that's what we all believe has happened, Corinthian church, right? If that's what's happened, then why don't you take your riches and help make others rich? So then Paul says, give to help God's mission and his church. If you have an abundance and there is a need, give to make a fair balance. That's what he's telling this church. Uh, Some good stuff, some good things to wrestle with. Hopefully you have some food for thought today on giving and investing. That is all for today. Join us next time on Ranch Together.